Welcome once again to the University of Birmingham for another Sky Sports Hockey Special. Today we've reached the last week of the National League season and the last two weeks been looking at the two sides in the Pizza Express First Division most likely to win that title, namely Hounslow or Haven't. Today, however, our attention's focused on the Second Division and a very important game between the Barford Tigers and Beeston, a game that Beeston simply have to get something from to be guaranteed their second division place for next season. So a very critical game. Let's have a look at how the teams line up. Starting with the home team today, Barford Tigers. Darren Palmer in goal, and it's four at the back. The high scoring, Darminder Singh, Gurmak Singh, Captain Manjit Dagan and Mohammed Mohammed. Three in the half-back line, Satpal Dagan, Jagdeep Sur and Amajit Dagan. And up front, Jaspal Chada, Hardeep Mataru and Satindapal Mann. Barford have played some of the league's most fluent and exciting hockey this year. Let's hear from one of three brothers in their team today, Amajit Dagan. Today's game is a local derby with uh, Beeston, and uh, it'll be an open game, entertaining game. We'll come out, play our game, and if we put our chances away, we'll come out with a win of 3-1, 2-1. And uh, hopefully it'll be, a, it'll be a very entertaining game. And their opponents today are Beeston. They select Neil McMillan in goal. Nick Seagrave at sweeper, then spread across the back, Peter Shuttleworth, Andy Neep, and Richard Bosley. In the engine room, it's Simon Downer, Stephen Wood, and the skipper, Steve Leeming. Leaving up front, Ellis Thorpe, Jeff Longdon, and Chris Bond. A tough match, and an important one then for Beeston. Plenty of pressure on them all to win a vital point, and for one man in particular, it's a very special day. For me personally, I'm looking forward to this game, playing against a team that I've played with for two years. Uh, as a team, we need to win, we need to get a point, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. My prediction for the score, 2-1 to Beeston. The umpires today are Graham Little and Jane Liggins. The technical delegate is former Indian international and international umpire, Bauer Singh. We'll be back after the break with all the first half highlights. And welcome back, where Beeston playing in the yellow shirts from right to left to get to this very important game for them underway. Uh, Centre forward, Jeff Longdon wears the number 11 shirt, a former Barford Tiger, of course, himself. Key game, as we heard for him today. But also for the club, desperate now for points, despite having not been in the relegation zone all season. Today is crunch time, the last game of the season. And it could still all go wrong for Beeston if results elsewhere go against them. Barford Tigers, well, they've had an excellent season. For so long, looked as if they could really trouble one of the promotion places. In the end, Serbert and Guildford really, through consistency, run away with it. But Barford Tigers, yes, a good season. Not too far away from promotion places at the end. Now, today, joining me in the commentary box, I've got a very interesting character. He's a former England and Great Britain centre forward between 1975 and 1977. Also a former treasurer of Great Britain, an assistant manager of the Great Britain team in the 84 Olympics. Good kick clear there by the Beeston goalkeeper. He's got such a long credential, this guy. It's going to take me half the match to, to introduce him properly, I think. On 100 county caps for Worcestershire and Bucks. He now manages a team in the National League Second Division. If you haven't already guessed who I'm talking about, it's Brian Disbury, the manager of Edgbaston. Brian, welcome. Thank you very much, Nick. It's great to be here. It was a very long journey. I live all of half a mile away, so it was great <laughs> to be here again. Well, it's nice to be able to draw on your vast experience in the game. For what I'm sure, Brian, is going to be a very interesting Midlands derby. I think so. Uh, Tigers um, may have relaxed a bit because they'll probably end up fourth at worst. Um, but knowing them, they will... Uh, if they're relaxed, they'll play very, very attacking hockey, which will put Beeston under a lot of pressure indeed. Well, the Tigers have got a brief to attack today and to go out there and show what they really can do. So Beeston, well, not quite so much freedom, I'm afraid, for them. This is a very key game. Must get something from this game to be absolutely sure. And they won't find Tigers an easy side to get the better of. Are you surprised, Brian, to find Beeston in this predicament? 
Yes, when they played us uh, towards the end of January, when on the restart of the this was half of the season, they came with a brief basically to try and get a draw, I think, and we played pretty badly, as you well know, and uh, let them have most of the first half. But I thought they were competent enough and would actually survive. I can't remember exactly who they played for the, uh, the, other, the next few games, but they lost them all, including doing nearly as badly as us against Surbiton. We lost 7-2 last week when we managed to lose 8-2 earlier in the season. But I am surprised. I thought that uh, with Longdon scoring goals that uh, they would survive quite easily, but with 17 points should be enough, but who knows? Good ball for there for Beeson for Jeff Longdon. Well, for Tigers defence, we're all about Longdon. Had two seasons with the Tigers at centre forward and scored some critical goals as well. Goals that saw Barford Tigers qualifying through the Midlands region for the National League. He's changed allegiance these days. Jeff Longdon, who works for Rolls Royce. Brian, your last game as uh, manager for Edgebriston today, you just took on the job for one season. You must be very pleased with the way it's turned out. Absolutely tremendous. I think the lads responded really very, very well. I made the decision to come back for one year only because uh, when Malcolm Kemble gave up last year, having got them tremendously well into the uh, National League, I felt they, at being an Edgebriston club member, they needed a bit of help to get them sorted out with Ian Mellor doing the coaching so well, to look after the admin and, and other things as well. And the first thing I did was got them fit, and I think that's got them through very well through the season with the fitness. Good break on here for Tigers, but the whistle's gone. The umpires today include on this side Jane Liggins, the only female on the National League umpiring panel. And her colleague today, also from the North, Graham Little. Good break on here for Beeson. Longdon wins the game's first corner. Foul there from Gurmuk Singh. Jeff Longdon turned him. Good skills there. It's been a pretty tight division, Brian, hasn't it? I mean, in, in truth, Guildford and Serban have really run away with it, but the rest of the sides, very little between them. Very little between them. It's quite amazing, in fact, that uh, if you look down the results, there's no consistency at all, except that uh, Guildford and Serbiton, as you say, ran away with it somewhat. We were slightly disappointed to have to play Guildford and Serbiton two weeks running both away early in the season, because I think uh, we could, could have done ourselves more justice. But no, they were by far the, the better sides. Huckle's corner easily charged down by Darren Palmer. So, no goal in the first few minutes. Beeson really need a goal to settle them down. There'll be a lot of tension out there on the pitch, I'm sure. They're also struggling a little bit today and that several of their talented young squad are not available for them for this important game due to an England juniors training weekend. It's a good ball out for Longdon. Longdon finding space on that right-hand side. Chance to attack the circle. Did well. And a chance here for Huckle. Palmer did well as well. Reflex save there from the big goalkeeper. Still not clear. And Huckle chipping over the top. I think the whistle already gone. Mike Huckle. Good break there, though, by big Jeff Longdon. The whistle had, in fact, already gone. So Huckle's effort wouldn't have counted. A bright start, though, by both sides. Good open game. Tigers very much their style, of course. On the top of their game, really, are one of the more exciting sides in either league to watch. Beast and two prefer to play an open, expansive sort of game. Although I'm sure tactically for them today, point is more important than the performance. I think Griff would have worked it out for them. Um, he did against us and played us very well indeed and decided that at home we'd probably be doing a normal attacking game and as Tigers will and he'll have sorted it out but it was Graham Griffiths the beast of manager that Brian is talking about as Dagan goes forward came off the foot Tigers take it quickly 
good interception there by Stephen Wood. Hammers the ball, 60 yards clear. Yes, I'm sure Beeston will have done their homework on the Tigers. Uh, two sides that know each other very well. Good ball again for Longdon. Now Longdon with a chance into the circle, shoots. Is there? Great strike by Longdon against his old club. There was a suspicion of offside, I think, in the Barford ranks. They were certainly looking across at each other. The marking wasn't tight, and Longdon took the ball into that circle and made mo no mistake whatsoever. That's the goal that Beast needed, Brian. Great centre forwards goal. I mean, took me back a few years that one, but oh. you shouldn't give him that sort of room. He's a big guy, but he's very, very good on the ball. Did exactly the same against us. Good goal. Mm. Now, will that goal sting the Tigers into action? It certainly stung them into a quick repost, and they win their first penalty corner. And you see some of the anxiety lifting from Beeston, but this is a critical corner, so often teams are vulnerable just after they've scored. And the Barford Tigers have done into sink. It's quite lethal at these. There's a shot, it's in! Well, we called it. Beeston are claiming that the ball wasn't stopped. Darminda Singh, who has scored many goals for Barford Tigers from similar situations this season, made no mistake. And really the sucker punch, Brian. Absolutely. I mean, they always difficult, Barford, on the, the break, and you can never relax. I think um, we came back at them, but uh, when we played them, but it, if you score three, they'll be looking to score four, no doubt. So... What a difference a minute makes. Now, Huckle Ford again. This really is a very open game. London caught offside there. Tigers are playing a very, very thin offside line. It's going to be a typical afternoon, I think, for both umpires. Just got it wrong on the earlier goal. That saw London going into the circle unchallenged. Came off the foot, getting put out to Beeston. So having got their noses in front, goal immediately cut it cancelled out by that strike from Darminder Singh. Longdon this time, he has the attentions of Gurmak on him. Stephen Wood for Beeston in the midfield. Good ball forward for Longdon. Again, the marking much tighter. Jit Dagan breaks down the middle, but a fine tackle there coming in. That was Seagrave, the beaten sweeper there, just stepping up with a poor pass. Empty corner, and the Tigers are really roaring now. So, Tigers probably seen striking this one, I would think, Nick. Well, they got a bit close to it last time, didn't they? This time he does hit it. Please. <laughs> it was a wonderful strike, wasn't mm. it? But uh, the ball not stopped again. The ball has to be stopped absolutely dead at a penalty corner before the shot at goal is made. On that occasion, the ball was not stopped cleanly. The ball has to be stopped outside. There's a lovely ball forward again for Mataru. Causing them a lot of troubles. And that's a stroke. Quite right. Excellent umpiring. The stick tackle came in, he was right the way through. Good, Good decision. decision. Excellent decision. Good decision, just taking the stick away as he was about to flick it in. Now it's that man Darmin to sing again. Up against Neil McMillan. Neil McMillan knocks under 21 goalkeeper. Darmin to sing against him from seven yards. is a big moment. And Singh sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. The Tigers are back ahead. Two goals to one. And Beeston, having started the game so well and taking that early lead, have got it all to do again. Coolly converted, Brian. 
very cool. Right in the corner, I think you'll see. He did pretty well the same against us, and uh, we we did the same against Tigers. We went 1-0 up, and we're soon 3-1 down. So, two goals for Darminder Singh. Takes him to 25 for the season. He's some way away, the league's top scorer, Ian Jennings, but... Uh, an excellent contribution for, from Darminder Singh. Scores goals are plenty in open play for penalty corners, as we've just seen there, also from penalty strokes. And the umpire giving that penalty stroke had to make one of two decisions. Jane had to decide whether the foul was a deliberate one or whether indeed it was a foul that would have prevented a certain score. I would have thought she'd have gone for the former. Although, in truth, the Barford Tigers forward was right through on goal. Looked a good decision. No real protest coming from Beeston. No, he really took his stick away. Stephen Wood, I think, who put in the final challenge. Here he is. He's putting out on this left-hand side now for Richard Bosley. He's gone forward now for Chris Bond. Bond turning away, looking for support. Finds it in Wood. Beeston have got to go forward now. Any thoughts they may have had of hanging on for the draw? Passed with that penalty from Darminder Singh. What you've seen of the second division, uh, Brian? Guildford and Surbiton, class teams? Yes, I think so. I think they'll both struggle in the, uh, the, the top echelon again. And Guildford... Oh, and again, Matru clean through, and a good, good tackle coming in. This time, the hit goes against the attacker. They really were stretched there, though. Bosley got back to make a covering tackle. But some beautiful, incisive passes coming from the Tigers' midfield. A little more composure. Matru could have had a couple of goals himself. Certainly could, and I think Harry Mengat, the Barford Tigers manager, was saying to me after the tig our game against Tigers how much they've missed Jeff Longdon yeah. this year. Yeah, for and, sure. Uh, you know, this lad, Metru, is uh, a good little player, but Longdon scores many more goals. Well, Jeff is deceptively quick, and he's a very simple centre forward. He's, he's not, a, not a fancy player. He goes route one, and he puts the ball away. Almost out of the Disbury coaching manual. Now, uh, Darminder Singh. Oh, that's good. Now good Jack Sewer. Tigers really are playing the freedom that we didn't see in their earlier televised game today. I think they were a little bit tied up in the earlier game. A lot more relaxed about things. I think Beeston will really struggle. Matro trying to win a corner and does so. Defender there was Andy Neep. Yes, the Tigers now really turning it on, and a third goal here could make life very difficult for them indeed. You don't need to tell me who's come up for it. Darminder Singh. Gurmuk Singh with a stop. Rolls it for Darminder, who shoots off the post, but again, the whistle's gone. Offside, I think. Yes, offside given. And that must have been pretty marginal. Good umpiring. Amajit crashes it forward again. Seagrave picks it up, knocks it forward. Beeston just need to compose themselves again. They started the game so well. Now Chris Bond. Ball coming just too far there behind. Downer. Got it again now, though. Simon Downer drills it forward. There's the Barford Tigers bench. Harry Mangat, the manager on the far side. There, what a great servant he's been for Barford Tigers over the years. Sing between two Beeston players. Deceptive pace there from Darminder going forward. Very good. Very strong player. Now Huckle again. Down this left-hand side. 1-2 with Longdon. Almost picked it up. Still got it. Well done. And into the circle. Chance here for the Bees. Oh, a good save from Palmer. Straight at the keeper, though, it has to be said. It was Ellis Thorpe who had the chance. There he is. Got, Ellis got Thorpe. good height on it, but uh, Darren Palmer stood his ground well. Thorpe, a Midlands under-21 player. 
should have scored there, really, and he'll know that. Now, Longdon with a snapshot. Penalty corner. Came off the defender's foot. Longdon just making a yard there off the defender. But that was a real chance for Ellis Thorpe. And they need this one, really. They do indeed. We're into the last couple of minutes of this first period. They trail by two goals to one. Now, Longdon. No, it slipped, and it's a good move from Beeson, surely here. Oh, too complicated. Nobody wanted to take responsibility. Longdon claiming the ball came off his knee. Wanting a corner, but really, that was over, really over the top. But too elaborate. Bogget had gone offside for the bar for Tigers. We've seen some super goals from corners, Brian, during our televised games. And many of them have been involved around working the ball around the circle and moving the defenders, in particular the goalkeeper. But that one really completely over the top. Yes, I think a, a maximum of three moves you can get away with, but then when it gets too complicated, something's bound to go wrong, especially when you've got the sides being so good on in defensive situations and the, the goalkeeper able to lie down or whatever you cannot move, keep moving it you've got to get a shot on goal uh, Chris Bond has taken a knock to the nose and uh, if I look at the white mark on the top of that nose that, uh, that could be a rather nasty one yes I think we're looking at uh, looking at a, a new nose and that's another blow for Beeston. They could have done without that. I don't think there's much doubt that, that that one's broken. What a shame. And Chris Bond, a Notts and Derbyshire player. And a lot of blood. Queen Elizabeth Hospital is only a chip and a putt away. Should be all right soon. Well, I've seen you putt, Brian. I hope he gets it a bit quicker than that. So, more blows for Beeston, just to reiterate how important this game is to them. The situation towards the foot of the Peter Express second division is such that if this result goes against Beeston today, and there's a combination of results beneath them that would not be to their advantage, and all the sides below them win, Beeston could be drawn into the dreaded playoffs. And I say dreaded because no National League side who's ended up in the playoffs has ever survived. Hockey has a rule which says that in the second division, the bottom two teams go down automatically and the next two go into the playoffs along with the six regional league champions. And it, and it is the dreaded playoffs. We came up through it last year and it is a very, very difficult situation. The problem for the National League size, of course, is that they are there under sufferance. The champions of the regional leagues are there. And it's really been their goal all season to, to arrive at Alton for the playoffs. And that's what will be facing Beast in the second half. The half-time whistle goes. A chance, perhaps, for Chris Bond to be fixed up. Barford for Tigers going to the half-time interval, leading by two goals to one. We'll be back after the break. And welcome back, where Barford Tigers in the green shirts are about to get the second half underway against Beeston. Barford Tigers lead this game by two goals to one in the Pizza Express second division. You were not with us before the interval. You missed seeing Jeff Longdon giving Beeston the lead after nine minutes from open play. That goal was cancelled out within a minute by Darminder Singh from a penalty corner. Fiercely flicked ball. And nine minutes later, it was Singh again, this time from the penalty spot giving us that half-time scoreline of Barford Tigers 2, Beeston 1. Beeston in the yellow shirts, really have got to get something from this game to be safe. Perilously close to the relegation zones. And they'll sleep a lot easier tonight, knowing that they've got a result here today. Yes, I mean, if Harborn do the unthinkable and beat Surbiton on the next pitch uh, today, and if Neston beat... the the local side Brooklands and if Cambridge beat Cambridge Isker, Isker um, Beeston will be really getting quite worried. So they've got to come out and attack and that means that uh, Tiger's great strength will be counter-attacking. We should see a few more goals. 
Alistair Shackleworth for Beeston, a respectable player. You won't be finding it too easy because there is light rain falling here in Birmingham. Quite a mild day compared to some that we've had to endure. Brian, how do you think Graham Griffiths and the Beeston bench will be wanting to play this game in the second half? Obviously, the fact they're now behind causes them some greater problems. I think what they've, they've got to do is that they've they've got to attack a lot more through Jeff Longdon, but I'm afraid because they've got these two or three players away, the youngsters away, I can't really see at the moment where it's going to come from. If it's with Chris Bond now off as well, I don't think he's back yet. No, I haven't spotted him no. yet. Uh, they're, they're obviously going to be struggling somewhat and relying a lot on Jeff Longdon and... Uh, the Barford lads know him pretty well at the back, and whilst Marking's never been their best subject, uh, they, Manjit Dagan and the others will be picking him up quite closely. But there again, Manjit's marking space just there. There's Leeming and Thorpe combining well there for Beeston. I'm sure Graham will have been pointing out, Graham Griffiths, that is their manager, been pointing out at half time that the Tigers are not good at defending. And they have been playing a very open game. There will be opportunities. They had the opportunities after that first goal. I recall well an excellent opportunity for Ellis Thorpe that he hit straight at the goalkeeper when it would have been really just as easy to have scored. They've really got to make the most of those opportunities. But of course, when the pressure's on, it's doubly difficult. I'm sure nine times out of ten, Thorpe would have put that ball away. But with a little bit more pressure on him today, well, who knows? Good skill there, uh, good the whistle's gone. Beeston get it away quickly, but Thorpe and able to... Mohamed Mohamed through for Dagan, but just offside. Great roar from the Tigers bench, but Graham Little, the umpire, perfectly positioned. There's Ellis Thorpe, number 10 for Beeston. My goodness, he'll rue that opportunity missed if Beeston don't find a way back into this game. This is Wood. Playoffs are going to be interesting because Alton are through. Alton from the Midlands. Hampstead and Ancorians through from the south. It's a great run down that goal line. And cracked away by Thaminda Singh, 50 yards, but a super run there. That's more like what Beeston are going to require. It looks like Ipswich from the east and... Ipswich or cross sticks, I think. Yes, and Wychurch from the west. Which yes, it's going to be interesting to see a Welsh side in the English National League. <laughs> a couple of Welshmen in the, some of the English club sides, really. One thinks of Hounslow mm. with three Welsh internationals in their side. There's Wychurch, possibly Swansea, and possibly Taunton Vale, I think, from the west. They're quite tight down there. I think Wychurch went through yesterday, Nick. Do they? I think. Corner. Corner. Here we go. Darminder again. Well, Brian obviously wasn't up as early as me this morning. He's had time to read the newspapers. But uh, yes, it'll be interesting to see how they fare in the playoffs. Now Darminder's moved forward again. Stop from Germak. Darminder winds up. Didn't really get behind it, but again, the ball not stopped. Both sides have had difficulty in controlling the ball. Penalty corners, umpires having to concentrate very hard. Just to remind you, the ball has to be stopped absolutely dead outside the circle. Came off the foot. Three hit to Beeston. It's also going to be interesting, Nick, to see who's going to come down with Bromley because it looks like Canterbury or Slough. And Slough have got Haven't to play, I think, today, and East Grinstead is their other game. That's right, no easy game is at all left now for Slough, I'm afraid. They could have a bearing on who actually lifts the championship with today's mm. game, though. They'll be fired up, certainly, for that one. Well, five minutes gone in this second half, still no further score. Beeston trailing Barford Tigers by two goals to one. Chris Bond off the pitch with a suspected broken nose. I think we can almost confirm that. There he is. And he looks as if he might well be going off to uh, find a casualty department. 
Uh, Amadjic, lovely ball there, forward for Mann. It's gone off the ball a little bit, and I think Beeston have really got to take it to the Tigers. They're about to bring on young Huckle. Here he is, just come on. Rolling substitutions, of course, in hockey. Players allowed to roll on and roll off. Uh, here's Huckle, and he's been quite a bright spark for my money in the opening half. Now Longdon trying to find room for himself. Bit of space here, and Palmer was up to it. Again, Beeson just making the mistake of delaying the shot a little too long. Big goalkeeper, Darren Palmer. Especially on that near post, uh, no way around him. Well, he's pretty big on either post, I think. There he is, Darren Palmer, former Harborn player. Now Huckle. That's a good, good break. Huckle continues his run. Can he get a shot in here? Good tackle. Coming in there from Germach. And needed to be. Palmer kicks clear, but not clear. Longdon. Now Ellis Thorpe again. And dear, oh, dear. just wide. Dear, oh dear. Is it going to be one of those days for Beeston? At least they're creating the chances again there, Brian, now. They are indeed, and uh, they need to put one of them away fairly soon, get themselves back in. Yes, quite a difficult job for the bench to judge how much pressure they can afford to apply, how many players they can throw into attack. Of course, every player that goes forward leaves them a little more exposed at the back. And a third goal now for Tigers really would seal this game up. It's a nice take by Shuttleworth. On for Huckle. The Tigers also <laughs> rolling the changes. Five yards, Jane blew there. I, I found that's been quite inconsistently blown this year, that the players don't really... Jeff Longdon again. Players don't really know where they are on that. When the ball falls. That's a difficult ball to interpret. Oh, lovely skills. Amajit not too far, just half a yard perhaps, in, too far in front of him. Tigers have bought on Jaspal Chada, wears the number 12 shirt. He's replaced Johal. So Harry Manga, the manager, just using his bench players sensibly, make sure everybody gets a game, which I believe is something Edgbaston are doing today. Is a very old face and a very great servant of Warwickshire, Midlands, and particularly Edgbaston hockey playing, Brian, today, isn't it for you? Absolutely. Our player coach, Ian Miller, is getting his first National League game. He's been registered, obviously, all season, but he's been main dude as a coach. And I've decided, with it being the last game of the season, that we should reward Ian. So he'll be starting at left half today. Well, I don't fancy being on the right wing. I never did against him. And it's so. and it's Ian's last season. I mean, Edgbaston do face a, a potential problem in that both Ian and I are giving up. But I was really only going to do it for one year. And Ian's been coached for five years now. And uh, it's time for perhaps somebody else to come along and do it. But he's been a tremendous servant for Edgbaston, was instrumental in getting them back into Birmingham when they had their problems. Amajit. Oh, that was a very dangerous tackle there coming in from Bosley. He looked anxiously at the umpire. It's a penalty corner, but goodness me, I thought that could have been the second stroke. Stroke country, I think, that one. It certainly was. Yes, Meller, Ian Meller, former England under-21 international. Under-23, it was Under then. Under-23, it was. <laughs> Well, it was a very long time ago. Anyway, good luck to Ian today. Now, Tigers. Daminder Singh drives it in, but too high. Ferocious strike, but the ball was never going to hit those 18-inch backboards and finished comfortably halfway up the net. So Interesting to see how fast Daminder hits it, because I've not seen too many this season hitting it quicker than him in the, the, the second division. Obviously, the first division, I haven't seen that many games, but people like Rob Hill and whatever, but his strike is pretty ferocious. It is, and I think the other thing, Brian, is, is the speed, not, not how hard he hits the ball, but the speed he gets his stick on the ball. A very, very quick back lift and follow through, and it's very, very effective indeed. 
In the old days, we used to talk about players who could get the ball on target with very little backlift. And I think perhaps in modern terms, one looks at Sean Curley, yep. who used to have the ability to get the ball on target seemingly with no backlift at all. And Darmid is very much like that. On AstroTurf, you don't need the high backlift because it's what the defenders are looking for. As, as soon as you get in the, the D and you lift your stick, the defenders, especially the good defenders, are taking the ball away. You've got to actually keep the ball, your stick, about a yard away at the most in terms of whacking the thing. And you can still get the power behind it, as Darminder showed. Good ball. Looking there for Stephen Leeming, just out of play. Whilst we talk about the growth of mini hockey, I think that the criticism of too many players in, in our country is that they all believe, I say all, obviously not quite true, many, many believe that as long as they just go out and play, they're going to be very, very good players. They will not go out and practice skills for enough time. Now, where have I heard that before? Was it about football or could it have been about cricket? But you're absolutely right. We really have got to get our basics. Back to basics. Let's start a campaign. Back to basics. And who has more success than Mr. Major's one? Now, Beeston with a little bit of space. Long tonight on that left-hand side. Past Arminda Singh. And into the circle. It's only a long corner. Disappointment there for Longdon. Wanted more than that. Was about right. It, uh... oh, I think it was exactly right. You can see the disappointment there. Driven in. And it's in. Took a deflection. It's Ellis Thorpe who's claiming it. We'll have to look at the replay again, but uh, well. Just got in there. Extraordinary. And, uh, yeah. Seemed to be no danger at all, but he just got in front of the defender and it ties it up again at two each. And what an important goal that could be. Brian, you'd have been happy to claim that one. It's nice little touch, actually. And I thought, I thought Jeff Longdon had got it for a moment, but Ellis Thorpe had got in. Good touch, that one. Very, very difficult to stop. Real poacher's goal. Now, Longdon. Longdon, remember, who scored that first goal in the ninth minute for Beeston. That seems a very long time ago now. He does indeed, and he just let himself down with a terrible pass onto the open side. But I think as, as far as the... Being an old centre forward myself, the champagne moment's got to be Jeff's first goal, as Ian just said, uh, Nick just said in, in the ninth minute. Uh, good old fashioned centre forward's goal, which he put away very, very well indeed. Well, I'm sure that would mean a lot to him, particularly against his old muckers. And Brian, you know, in my heart of hearts, I knew you were going to go for that, because that really was a Brian Disbury special. Oh, where was that stick? Too high, obviously. Jane Liggins right on top of, of her game. Now Ellis Thorpe making his way towards that corner flag He's again and winning there. a penalty corner. Well, she didn't like the tackle, obviously. She didn't, and it was uh, couldn't have been closer to her. It was in the 25-yard area, but a judged deliberate and a chance now for Beeston to go for all three points. Three and a half minutes left. Seagrave has moved up to push the ball out. There it goes. Stops a good one this time. And Longdon made space for the shot. Palmer did well. And Darminder almost winding up there to clear that one. Just thought better of it. And there's Darren Palmer. He played well. Certainly hasn't given Beeston an easy ride. A couple of good saves. Both players there, uh, sticks very high, don't like to see that. And a good break on here, Huckle again, forward for Longdon, good early ball to the centre forward this time. Longdon in now for Thorpe, Thorpe round the back, reverse shots. That's good skills there by Ellis Thorpe, he's grown in confidence since that goal. Huckle, one of the success stories for my money for Beeston today, Huckle. 
involved at both ends. I remember him combining with Shuttleworth, clearing that ball. Could have given Tigers their third goal. It's prompted so many beast attacks as well. All the Beeston bench not on the bench, suffering from Disbury disease, I think. No, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? They're pacing around down there. They know they've almost done enough, and it could all be so cruelly snatched away. Just one mistake. Now, driven in, and this is that mistake, and wide. He's put it wide again. Dear, oh dear, just fell charter. Well, I don't think the Beeston bench can believe it either. I dread to think what uh, medical state they're in down there. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Yeah. Steve Muston there, the coach, holding his head. He can't believe it was missed either. Goodness me, what an important miss that could be from Beeston's point of view. Both these sides, of course, from the Midlands region. And I think it's fair to say they've been great friends and adversaries over the years. We're into the last minute now. Surely Beeston have done enough. <laughs> Steve Buston now, not considering coming on himself now. I think it's just so close to the end. It's gone stone cold. And I think Beeston deserve this result today. They're a great asset to the National League. I know, Brian, they were a great help to you as you were preparing to come up. Yes, they've been, as you say, a great asset for the last uh, few years, and good for them. They've now got 18 points and will stay in Division 2 with us next year, and we look forward to playing them at Beeston. Well, the final whistle has gone. Beeston have indeed hung on to their National League lives. They've drawn this game with Barford Tigers by two goals each. We'll be back.